It is an honour for us tonight to have the Reverend Dr. Paul Sheppey with us, um, a man uh, who is, has been a friend of mine for many, many years, a man of a ridiculous range of eccentric talents, uh, county cricket umpire, guitar builder, uh, advanced sports car driving instructor, um, but above all, he is a wonderful pastor and preacher and theologian, and Paul, we are very honoured to have you with us tonight. And we look forward to whatever you're going to share with us now. Over to you. Well, thank you, Nathan. That's very kind. I hope that everybody can hear me. Um, and the first thing I want to say is that it's 15, 16 years ago since I was with you in South Yarra. And I spent six weeks uh, with Nathan that he's never really recovered from. And... Um, I want to say a special thank you, even though I, don't, I can't see her at the moment, I want to say a thank you to Acacia, whose um, bedroom Sue and I stole for the duration of that six weeks, so uh, thank you to her. When Nathan uh, suggested that I might like to preach for you and then told me the Sunday that he wanted me to preach for you, um, I thought, oh well that's interesting, Thomas again. Um, Thomas gets a funny sort of press, doesn't he, really? Uh, he's either a hero because he's determined to see for himself that the Lord is risen, or he's a villain because he doesn't really believe the rest of them when they tell him. And I think that's to miss the point. Because uh, Thomas isn't really different from any of the other disciples. They all wanted to see for themselves. Mary came but with the news that the Lord was risen, and the first thing that Peter and John do is chase off to have a look for themselves. They're no different from Thomas, and Thomas is no different from them. And in a sense, we're all like that. And that's one of the things that perhaps we're going to find out later as we read through. The interesting thing is how often in this story we're told that all of this happens behind closed and locked doors. Now, I've, uh, I've seen some pictures of what's going on in Sydney and I've seen some pictures of what's going on in Melbourne. And uh, you're all behind locked doors like the rest of us. It feels like being under house arrest and um, we're not supposed to go out anywhere unless we're going to get some food. Uh, or if we're going to take some uh, regulated exercise. And um, we're behind closed doors. And if we see our neighbours, we wave at them from a distance. We can't go and greet them. We can't hug them. We can't touch them at all. And this passage is that we've been hearing earlier, especially the passage in John's Gospel, talks about the Lord appearing to people who are behind closed doors. The Lord comes to us in our isolation and comes to us in fear and in our anxiety and speaks the word. And the word that he actually speaks um, is peace, shalom which doesn't mean, uh, well, you put your feet up now. What it means is good health to you. Good health to you. And here we are behind locked doors, frightened out of our wits um, as to whether we're going to catch the dreaded lurgy. Uh, at least three of my friends have. Uh, so far they've all survived, but three others of my friends have died in this period. Um, not from coronavirus, but old friends of mine, and they've died. And the doors are locked. We cannot go to say goodbye to them. We cannot go to share at the graveside. And these are hard times. Thomas comes because he wants to see for himself. And then funnily enough, as we look in that epistle reading in 1 Peter, there's a reference there which is very interesting. What it says towards the end of the passage is, well, blessed are you who have not seen, but still trust. Blessed are those who 
do not know for sure because they put their hand out and touch the Lord, but still love him. So here we are, people who have not seen physically the risen Lord, who are behind locked doors. And Peter says to us, Peter, you remember, who was the one who was always so keen, but always made a complete cock up of it, opened his mouth, put his foot in it, said, I'll follow you anywhere, but not there. Um, said, you're the Messiah, but you mustn't die. Dear old Peter, who makes a mess of everything, Peter says, you are blessed. Those of you, those of us who have not seen and have not touched, but we still trust and we still love. And in the psalm, we read about not being abandoned to the pit of Sheol, death, a sort of shadow land, a pit. And Peter quotes that in his sermon in, in, in Acts 2. We're all frightened of being abandoned in this time of loneliness. We are sad that we cannot say hello to the people that we love. We can do it on Zoom, but we can't do it by shaking their hand, by kissing them, by hugging them. And we're all like Thomas. We want a miracle. And we want a miracle that we can see. But the miracle is going to be a long time coming. We're told yesterday on the, on the British news, one of the British uh, news broadcasters was saying that there may be a possibility, there may be a possibility, that they may possibly have a vaccine by the beginning of September. Well, that's too late for me. My wife and I were going to go to France last week to celebrate her 70th birthday. And we're going to meet our families in France some of them in Canada, some of them coming from the north of England. And we're going to do that at the end of August. September's too late. I want a miracle now. Who doesn't? We're all like Thomas Leary. And the final phase in, phrase in the Gospel reading is very interesting. It says this. There are other signs that Jesus did. And that suggests to us that we might want to understand this appearance to Thomas behind locked doors as a sign. The fourth evangelist, John's Gospel, talks about signs rather than miracles because nearly every sign that happens in John's Gospel is followed by discussion. So you get the raising of uh, Lazarus and then you get a long discussion about the resurrection and the life. You get the feeding of the 5,000. You get a long discussion about Jesus as the bread of life. So this appearing to Thomas is a sign. And what is the significance of that sign? I think it's this, among other things, that Jesus comes to us in our fear and in our anxiety, in our unwillingness to be suckered in by some good news story that we fear isn't true. And he stands with us. And he simply says, peace. Peace be with you. Now, it's interesting that at the beginning of that passage also, what happens is he breathes the spirit on them and he says something to them very extraordinary. And I was very grateful earlier in this uh, liturgy that we've had together that we have the forgiveness of sins. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. Now, when I was with you in, uh, in Australia all those years ago, one of the things I did was I went with Robert Gribben, who some of you will know, and I went to the community of uh, the Transfiguration out in Geelong. And I, I'd no sooner arrived there, and they said, oh, would you like to preach, which is not a kind thing to do to any preacher. Um, but their liturgy included some extraordinary words, which I've never forgotten. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, what will you do with them? What will you do with the sins of others? Will you carry them? Will you be the sin bearer? 
Will you harbour them as resentment? Jesus comes and he doesn't criticise Thomas for his failure to believe. He simply says, peace. And the closed doors are the closed minds that we have. Our refusal to believe, whatever it is. Sometimes we believe because it simply ain't true. Fair enough. But sometimes we refuse because it's almost too good to be true. And we dare not believe it. But these passages this morning tell us that, or this, art, this evening for you, these passages tell us that if we will open our minds and open the door, Christ is there. And the doors are no barrier to Jesus. So here we are in the beginning of the season of Easter in the year 2020, in the middle of a lockdown, which our government has gladly increased for another three weeks, another four weeks. They're very keen to lock us in. I don't know what we've done to deserve it, but there you go. Here we are in Easter, in lockdown, behind the doors, frightened, looking for a miracle. Can we be delivered? And the message to Thomas, and the message to you, and the message to me is, I am here, peace be with you. Paul, thank you. You have been the bearer of the word of God speaking directly to our hearts and our fears, and we are very grateful to you.